Welcome back. We're getting real close now to finishing up Iron Keep. After a somewhat unfortunate and horrifying setback last time, we now return more experienced and wiser. Mimic locations are set, so if you are paying attention and not intentionally trying to show things off, they're fairly easy to avoid. For that matter, the Iron Chest Mimics also have a tell. The wooden ones have padlocks on them. The iron ones have sort of these white... I'm not really sure what you would call them. I'll point them out when we actually see the chest. They're almost like straps. Now, you don't actually have to pull that lever at all. You can go through this area without ever having to dunk those guys in the lava if you don't want to. However, to reach the upper area where we encounter the Mimic, you do need to pull that lever. There's a bit of danger in doing so, given that it does bring down those cow heads, but... In terms of risk versus reward, it's pretty slanted towards reward. How do backstabs work? Somebody tell me! Alright, let's be careful to pick up our souls without opening the chest. And you can see what I mean there. There's those two white tacit locks, or whatever you want to call them. And normal iron chests do not have those. Now, because mimics are dangerous, even when you do know where they are, I want to equip my best weapon here. We don't have great combustion equipped, so we can't just kill it that way. Now, even if you get the drop on a mimic, they will still open up with that bitey grab attack, so don't stand right in front of them. Fortunately, they take forever to uncurl, so... As long as you avoid that initial grab, you should be able to kill them without taking a hit. If they get going, though, they have very long reach and powerful attacks. This chest is perfectly safe, however. There's no padlock on it. Now, while I usually advocate for activating most lockstone devices, this one can be safely ignored. It's just another water pool that doesn't really do anything because you can't actually go back down quickly this way. Lockstones are technically infinite, but you do need to go to the Rat King Covenant to get more after you find all the ones in the world. So, be stingy. Or at least prudent. This room can be a nasty surprise. There's three Alon Knight Captains here, all with great bows. And apparently sick Kung Fu skills, because that guy just palm struck me. I've literally never seen them do that before or after. If you are methodical, and you take them out one at a time, you can sort of manipulate their AI into switching back to the Great Bow, even when it's not necessarily advantage to them by just getting far away. And while it will still hurt, it's easier to deal with than the Katanas. The Black Knight Great Axe is a hulking piece of metal that requires a whopping 40 strength to use. We couldn't even do that with two hands, so it will have to sit in our inventory for a little bit. It is, however, probably the most powerful of the Great Axes when it's fully upgraded. It has a very strong attack pattern. The way down here is pretty treacherous, so... If you're not confident in your platforming skills, you might just want to use a homeward bone after you get the axe.
just take it slow and steady, plan your drops, and try not to get ahead of yourself. This is probably the most difficult one. You need to have a little bit of a running start, but not too much of one. That unfortunate skeleton was holding the base form of the covetous gold serpent ring, so that's nice, I guess, but we already got the better version from Magarold. I feel like that's sort of a design flaw, to be honest. Now, curiously, in this area, we can actually traverse the mist from behind. This leads us back out to the room we were in. It's just a weird little thing. It's not really important, but it's sort of neat. At any rate, you probably should traverse it just to make sure that the way is clear. You never know when you might need to make a hasty getaway. There's nothing actually along this catwalk except for that ironclad, so we can continue on. Quite frankly, the deeper we go in, the more I am baffled as to the purpose of this keep. Now, fighting the ironclads in such a narrow corridor can be really difficult if you don't have high adaptability and you don't have very many invincibility frames on your dodge roll. Because their overhead swing, which is normally very easy to avoid, is now basically impossible to sidestep and you have to roll away from it. If you have enough of a head start, you can just back away. However, that also makes it more difficult to get back in and counter, so it's a bit of a balancing act between safety and attack. This literally just looks like video game trap room. Is this some sort of torture chamber? Like, I'm, re I'm reminded of Lethal Lava Land from Super Mario 64 with the grates and the spikes and all the magma. even hitting anything. Fortunately, we can make that true for every head in the every head in the keep because that switch will turn all of the bullheads spitting fire off. We have a pretty nice view from this window up here. Over here not so much. That just looks like bad territory. Why would you build this here? At any rate, this is the final bonfire in the place. Igil's Idol. Now, as we are wont to do during these long explorations, we tend to get a lot of souls, so... Before putting those in danger, I want to go and spend them. I knew. I'll be around if you make it back. The usual weapon and accessory maintenance is important, but today I mostly want to level up. So we're getting pretty high up there in terms of stats, but I'm really tired of getting stymied by dexterity requirements, so I decided to dump almost all of my points into dexterity. After doing some figuring. Now, completely neglecting your defensive stats like this might not be a great idea, and I don't really recommend it, but there are so many weapons that I want to use and show off that I cannot, because they simply have high dex requirements. And since you can't two-hand those, I figure that it's worth it to make the investment. Mm -hmm. 
now unburdened, we can continue on. If you don't have flash sweat, this is also the way to get the iron keep key way back at the beginning of the level. Area, I should say. Level is a little bit old school. Do be careful of those spikes. If you walk your stupid face into them, you will get poked. One more ironclad guards the way, and he's in another narrow corridor. Strike weapons are a huge godsend against them. Especially ones that attack quickly. What the... What is going on with the architecture here? Oh. Good god. Alright, whoever built this place had a thing for bulls. What purpose did that serve? I have literally no idea. Whoever built this place was out of their minds. Alright, it's time to face the boss of Iron Keep. While there is considerably less pomp and circumstance, the boss of Iron Keep is also a great old one, like the Lost Sinner. I'm configuring myself for more or less maximum fire resistance, while still being able to maintain a decent roll. Our hammer will not be very helpful in this fight because of its short range, so I'm looking for a more suitable weapon. In my infinite wisdom, I finally end up deciding on the Crescent Moon Sickle. Mostly because I just I haven't used it yet and I want to show it off. We have to two-hand it, but that's hardly a problem. Shield blocking will do nothing for us in this next fight. It has a similar attack pattern to the Great Scythe, but it is a little bit different in its reach and speed. It's overall probably an inferior weapon to the Great Scythe, but it has enormous bleed potential. Probably the most in the game once you fully max it out. So if that's if that's your style, then by all means go farm one up from the artificial undead. Iron King, a somewhat uninspiring design boss fight, but that's basically the fight, by the way. You can only really safely attack him, or even attack him at all with most weapons, when he slams his fists down. There are a couple of opportunities where if you have a weapon with a strong overhead swing, you can attack his face. But the fists are his weak point. And regrettably, you can't lock onto them, so once he brings them down, it's best to just ditch lock on entirely. I would recommend that throughout most of the fight, you keep it on just so you can keep tabs on what he's doing. But it's not necessary if you're more comfortable not. The biggest challenge in this fight is probably the arena. 
it's not exactly spacious, and each side leads to certain death via lava. There's even a little magma pit in the back there to keep you from hugging the back wall, which is probably what will get most players. Try to dodge laterally whenever possible. Now, despite the fact that it looks like it probably shouldn't, the Full Moon Scythe has the same problem as the Great Scythe, in that if you're too close to an enemy when you hit them, you will do much less damage. You can block basically none of his physical attacks, so just try and dodge them. His fire attacks you might have better luck with blocking if you have high fire resistant shield, but it's best to dodge. Speaking of dodging and being best, I don't feel like I got hit there. Like, that's just, that's sort of my, that's sort of my assessment of the situation, that I did not actually get hit by his big hand. Maybe I was at so low health that a flying dust speck hit me in the eye and I keeled over. I don't know. But after a quick check to make sure that all of my rings are okay, I go in for a rematch with the Dark Light Spear. Silver Black, sorry. Silver Black Spear. He did not use this attack last time, and it's pretty easy to avoid. He, it also makes him very vulnerable. He just shoots a jet of lava from his hand in a certain direction. As long as you treat it just like a fist slam, you'll avoid it no problem. This double slam that he likes to do is also something that leaves him open for a long period of time. However, getting hit by either of those hurts a whole lot, so be careful. This fire attack he does here is probably the hardest to dodge. It sort of requires you to roll very precisely between the flames. And it can be difficult to do consistently. There is a much better way to avoid all of his fire-based attacks, but it's sort of cheesy, so I try not to do it. Speaking of cheesy, sometimes the old Iron King will simply get into this pattern and go over and over and over again with his fire breath, and you just you can't retaliate. It's really stupid. I hate it. Ranged characters might have better luck, but they're still in danger of getting hit by a blistering counterattack. Flash Sweat helps a lot in this battle if you have it. His physical attacks are so easy to dodge that the fact that it only does fire damage reduction isn't really a big deal. Almost went tumbling off the side there. That gave me a heart attack. This is probably his most damaging move, and naturally I get hit by it. It's just like the normal double slam, except it has a little bit more um, lateral range due to the flame aura. I really wish you could lock onto the fists, by the way. Fortunately, he lets me put him out of his misery. The old Iron King can be a fun fight if he decides to play fair. If he, if he just decides to spam his flame attacks, then it's just boring. It's not hugely challenging, but again, if he gets into a pattern where he simply uses the fire attacks over and over, it's pretty easy to either lose patience or just get overwhelmed. The easier way to dodge his attacks, by the way, is to simply hide behind the wall to the right that leads to this area. You can't get down because of a fog gate, but if you hide behind the wall, you'll be basically immune from all of his projectile attacks except for the fire laser. Now this is interesting. This chamber leads to a DLC area.
In this case, the Old Iron King, appropriately, guards the DLC area of the crown of the Old Iron King. Now, the DLC is definitely balanced for characters that are more powerful than us, and farther along in the game, and successfully completing it anyway would really fuck up our soul memory even more. So, I'm making an executive decision to show off this later. That said, I do have something I want to do here before we leave. Just to make certain things in the future easier. I don't really know what the deal with these statues are. Are they grave markers? We simply don't know. Now, you can come to this foyer area if you haven't purchased the DLC. The area is in the game. It's just to get, pa get past this honking huge door, you need the key, which you get from purchasing the DLC. Generally speaking, I would recommend it. It's pretty good. It's got its ups and downs, but the areas are pretty cool and well designed. Quite something indeed. It almost looks like it's snowing, but all this white stuff is actually ash. What on earth is that thing? Whatever the case, it gives us some smelter wedges, in case we want to do some smithing, I guess. To reach the main area, we need to cross this impromptu bridge made out of a giant iron link chain. Why this is here, you have me in deep water. If they wanted to make a bridge, they probably should have just made one with guardrails. But, you know... You yeah, know. At any rate, this is Broom Tower, and this is the first bonfire. For now, we will quit ourselves at this place because... For a lot of reasons that I already mentioned, honestly. However, having this warp point open will make the trek back here much easier. It's sort of a pain to have to go back through the whole I old Iron King area and Iron Keep. Iron, 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 iron. The soul and the curse are one and the same. Your soul has grown stronger still. I only hope it brings you what you wish. Well, what I wish for now is more dexterity. So at least in the short term... Twenty-seven dexterity is about the maximum of most weapons that you will find. There are a couple that are over that, but by and large, the vast majority of weapons in this game will not require more than twenty-five or twenty-seven dexterity to use. After we burn that bone dust, I make a fatal mistake and try to go and talk to Shalkor again. You've been long away. Before that, however, I wanted to show off that now that we have beaten Iron Keep, only one thing to provide, and we both know what that is. <laughs> Cloan the Stone Trader will actually provide us with an unlimited supply of normal Titanite shards. So our upgrading options have just basically ballooned out of control. Visit me again, whenever you please. In fact, if you're like me and you like trying out different weapons, you might just spend quite a bit of time at this point in the game just grinding for souls so you can upgrade a bunch of stuff and see what you like. Oh. You do have a... a t now this time, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm gonna you get the necessary that, flavor dialogue from Shalquar, yeah. since I literally just beat the boss. This place is... Are you going to see... The but just no such luck. I don't know what the I don't know what the triggers are. 
It's really frustrating, honestly. You give it my. Did you see that oddly form? All the. Whatever. Since I'm here, I'll, I'll buy a homeward bone. You can never have too many of those, really, in case of emergency. One last thing that we want to do before we wrap up for the day. Down in the mansion's basement, where Kale is holding vigil, another flame has appeared on the map. That's up to three. Maybe one day we'll get the whole thing lit up. But until then, let's take a rest.